do you think that the audience for blues and rhythm and blues and all the kinds of music that came from that um, changed over the last 20 years since you have been involved in this music? Yes, I think that uh, today that um, uh, years ago you only had a very, uh, very few blacks that really liked rhythm and blues and uh, blues. Mostly whites was listening to hillbilly and sweet music, as they said a long time ago. And like today, you have a, a great percentage of, of whites uh, today that are uh, really into blues. For a fact, uh, whites are more into blues than blacks because blacks don't really like blues. Why not? I don't know. I think that they are, I'm speaking mostly of the young black generation. They consider I, it old-fashioned. They consider it old-fashioned, like... When, when I was growing up, my parents' radio was blues, so we're used to it. And so we think like, I think the young gener generation thinks like, well, that's, that's old-fashioned, that's, that's out, that's no more. Mm. Yeah, well, well I, I don't think, uh, and then what I think to the, uh, to the white audience, it's new. It's something that they've never heard before, although the, the, the black generation has heard it, but uh, uh, the young have heard it, you know, but they say, well, that's old folks' music. But where everything is changing today is like everybody like antiques, yeah. you know. And so I think like uh, I, uh, I think like in England, I think like England really started the blues back. Uh, well, in reality, whites control uh, the the power as far as what the mass audience hear. Like they have the fifty thousand water, hundred thousand water radio stations and uh, and television. So like if they don't want uh, a blues number played on the radio or uh, television, then like they would say no. Well, where if it was uh, their son or their daughter or something that was doing the blues numbers, like they would, uh, they would do it. Uh, uh, you know, if if his son's got a ear for it, you know, uh, maybe there's other kids that's got a ear. Where if a black guy wanted to do it, I, I don't think they would. So today, after England started with uh, R and B, uh, I mean, I would say blues, uh, then. Uh, then it got back to America, and then Americans started to dig in blues, you know. So, like, now everybody's saying blues, man. Well, like, it's been around them all their life. They just never heard it. I see. Thank you. Uh, Tina, uh, people say sex is very important in your show. And yeah. what, what's your comment on that? Hmm. <laughs> well, I think uh, excitement is very important in our show. As I've said before, uh, it's, it's so strange to me how the eyes that people see our show with, they think uh, sex only. I, I wondered once that if I didn't do a little skit that I can myself do, uh, I've been loving you too long, from the song, uh, from the album about a season. I wondered if, I, if we never did that song, would it still be considered sex? And then I came to the conclusion of talking to you earlier today that maybe it's it's just a natural thing with our show like it's a little bit of everything and and sex just falls in naturally what about the closing who decides about that oh well i used to do it tina do it now uh, well it came about with the band in the beginning we were, they were wearing the suits and the ties so then things changed and so like i never made a rule to the band don't wear suits or this or that. Like everybody just sort of start uh, being, being mod and sweaters and things. It was just a thing to do now. Just, just like um, uh, you change your diet, so, right? Yeah, well, I, I, would, I would think more, it's more free. Uh, uh, music is more freer today uh, than before. Uh, and I think the same thing as, as far as dressing. You want to dress where you feel comfortable to perform. Girls don't wear bras. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I, uh, it took me years to get teen out of a bra, man. You know, no. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the girls, like teen and the girls, they usually dress. And everybody else just casual. Because that way you can just let your hair down. Like, if we go in Las Vegas now, we have to put on suits, man. And, uh... I mean, you don't know how hot it is to put on a white starch shirt, you know, with a tie, a key, you know. Well, the thing about the bra, it's like, I never really, like, tried to, like, get me out of it. It was the style that came in where you couldn't wear, like, 
a bra with the see-through dresses. You wear body stocking now. Oh. So it's more or less like that sort of thing. No like, way. We never planned that. No, no, look. For stage. Like, in other words, you're saying now that you planned sex for the show and we never no, planned it. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying, like, in 1966, <laughs> well, if I go back as far as 1961, there was a girl who came on stage with a short dress. But she didn't have on any stockings, you know, like the stockings they wear today, you know. But she, and so I like the idea because, like, you know, like, you know, men like legs. I mean, some men, I do. And, uh, and uh, in 1966, when we came over to London with the uh, Rolling Stones, man, I was trying to get Tina into a mini dress, man. Woo. No way. So I went downtown in London, and I bought, uh, like, $3,000 worth of mini dresses, and I brought them back and gave them to her. And so that started it. And I'm trying to think, when did she get out of a bra? I went to Lori Lazar and bought all the uh, see-through things. You couldn't wear, you had to wear body stockings with them. The black dress, remember? No, but you came out of that bra before then. Uh, yeah, well, she anyway. can't. Yeah, right, we only went to Paris in 68. Tina was going without a bra in 67. Right? Well, okay, <laughs> next question. <laughs> but anyway, she needed a bra on because the, uh, the other night, huh? Oh, come on. Uh, oh. <laughs>